darlings in today's video we're gonna spend a day in IJ's kitchen a day in my belly <laughs> and we're gonna talk about the food story um, this is a concept I I have recently coined have I recently coined it I'm not sure but I'm going to explain myself soon enough let's start with my inspiration why did I decide to do this video and share what I want to share in this video and that's because i'm a woman of a certain age and you know the older a girl gets the more aware one has to be of their food story and recently i've had this little stumbling block not really a stumbling block but i'll explain myself more <laughs> as we roll on this story and i've recently had a new epiphany in regards to my food story you know you think you figured it all out and I think people make that assumption they think just because you're a certain size or you eat a certain way that means you've figured out your food story and the last couple of months I would say the beginning of 2020 really brought me back into you know what this is a constantly evolving story and I have to give myself a room to to write that story to or find medicine in the discovery of that story so I have been over indulgent <laughs> there's a very strong hedonistic spirit within me I absolutely love pleasure I love good things I love feeling good and food does it for me food really ticks those boxes for me you know it gives me an immense amount of pleasure so I've been eating indulgently and there was a part of me that was excusing myself simply because I eat in a quote-unquote healthy way you know I pride myself in the way I eat as we know there is a new name for a new diet every day um, I've taken away labels from naming myself it was getting a little bit frustrating but according to the cool kids on the internet I eat a plant-based whole foods diet yes that's what it is I do have a bit of flesh here and there but yeah I don't really like labels back to what I was saying <laughs> so I have been overindulgent and I have put on weight now this is not a huge problem for me because I have done that shadow work I am very um, I am very comfortable in my body I am very aware of what it is capable of doing and what I need to do to keep it in a place that I like, that I feel my strongest, my most beautiful. So putting on weight does not terrify me. And to be honest, I was in denial. I didn't want to hear it, especially from my husband. <laughs> he was like, baby, 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 you're putting on weight. And I'm like, baby, 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 I'm not putting on weight. <laughs> but I had put on weight, you know. Clothes were feeling a little bit more snug. And because I'm in this phase right now, that a lot of people struggle with and that is the diet phase I really don't like that word but we'll talk about it a little bit more later I thought doing this video could be a way of sharing the way I live the way I eat the way I see my body and my food story my food story now I'd like to share with you how I got to the word food story as I said the word diet I really don't like it in fact it's not even a word we use appropriately diet simply means this is how I eat but now diet means restriction you know you hear the word diet and it really inspires these ideas of tiny little rabbit salads and extremism when it comes to food so I feel like it was really important for me to remove the word diet from my language because diet also has this connotation of this is short term i'm just doing this for one reason which tends to be losing weight from moving from the word diet to my food story i have realized that i had laid some really powerful foundations and i have just taken myself to another level of commitment and self-love and self-discovery and discipline that I never thought I could have because this is not something that was emulated to me you know I grew up with women who struggled with their food story they didn't even know their food story and here I am writing from scratch you know there's, there's nobody who inspired me I had to 
I've had to learn so much about how to nourish my own body that I, sh I technically should have learned from home, but I didn't learn from home. It's not something I'm bitter about. I'm just pointing it out simply because a lot of us are like this. We did not learn how to nourish our bodies from home. We either learned from outside or we haven't learned point blank period. So what is a food story? To me, the food story is the big picture. It's, it's looking beyond your plate. It's asking yourself, why do I eat what I eat? How do I eat? Do I understand my food? It, it can even go as far as where does my food come from? And it also involves deciding that food is medicine and fuel, not just pleasure for your body like really sitting down and understanding the weight of that statement it's just too laissez faire out here people is just too goddamn casual <laughs> about what they're willing to eat and not even question it and i do not say this from a place of arrogance i don't it has taken me a long time to get where i am i can say i first started my first i will lose weight moment in my life I had to be 16, 17, I'm now 33. It's a long time. That is a long time. That is what, 18 years? God. That is a very long time to unpack that type of suitcase. So I am not coming from a place of arrogance. It, it takes time. And now that I mentioned timelines, my food story is also a way of me respecting the future IJ loving on the future ij i feel like this is a part of self-care that is not taken into consideration enough and not from a place of vanity we'll talk about vanity soon but eating well understanding your food story is a way to deeply commit yourself to your future self to love on your future self to to invest in your future self to say you know what today i'm gonna do this so that my 80 year old self is gonna be good. You know, today I'm gonna do this, so my 130 year old self, yes, those are the goals. IJ wants to get to 130. <laughs> I got a lot to do. Your food story also involves investing in your future self. And not just for yourself, as I said, this is not about vanity. It is a part now of your legacy. It's about the people around you. It's about whether you decide to be a mother or a father. How healthy are you to, to walk that journey with these little humans you've brought into the world? You know, and if you, you don't want to be a parent, investing in your future self allows you to do what you're meant to do here. You know, if you don't have the physical strength, if you don't have the discipline, <laughs> If you don't have the discipline, how are you going to do what you're meant to do? Anyway, let's talk about breakfast. For breakfast, as you can see, I had fruit, yogurt, and granola. But let's talk about this granola. It is really, really good. If you make your own granola at home, this is a flavor profile you definitely have to try. Chili and chocolate. Get into it. Get into it. I wish I added cocoa powder to this recipe, but I have done that in the past and really created beautiful granolas. I love making my own granolas. Um, they're quite simple to make. There are lots of recipes out there. Um, make your own granola and try chili and chocolate. Really, really good. I had breakfast maybe two hours ago. Um, I'm having chapati for dinner. Yes, let's talk about dinner a little bit before we dive back in into a serious talk about the food story. So I'm having chapati for dinner, as I said, and I did my dough in the morning. Everybody is different about their dough. I think the classic chapati dough just has flour, water, oil, maybe a touch of salt, but everybody has their little extra bits that they add to their chapati depending on their signature really for me my signature is to always add a touch of spice i always add a bit of mixed spice in there i also do like to sometimes not all the time enrich the dough enriching the dough means adding either an egg or some yogurt or some milk something that will enrich the dough 
and what else I, what else is IJ's signature yes I love mixing flowers I love playing with flower ratios and different types of flowers most people like to do their chapati in white flour I as I said I love playing in my kitchen this is my playground it's the place that I love to break rules <laughs> And yeah, the door was done in the morning. And now as we continue to talk, I would like to roll out my door, do the second bit. Um, I'm going to switch the camera around. Give me a second. This particular dough that I've made is an entire experiment. In this, I used millet, chickpea flour, I used wheat bran as well, white flour as well. This is a combination I've never tried before. I am being very, very hopeful. But I like to move with faith in my kitchen. You know, if I can try something once, that's all I need. Once is, it's good enough. It's good enough so I'm now doing the next step um, what does this step do hmm this step just gives the chance how do I explain it this step gives the chapati a chance to form layers to trap air within it so that when we cook it the air puffs up and cooks the flour cooks the dough I don't know if that makes sense, but that is the science behind this step. The dough is giving me a little bit of trouble, but as I said, I will always try something at least once before I give up or write it off. and as i do this let's talk about one of the most important things about the food story and that is the why you know and let's i'll focus on my why's because we all have different reasons i don't want to assume that my reasons are the best reasons you know at the end of the day it's your food story not mine you know we have different bodies we have different needs we have different budgets we have different desires different taste buds you see where i'm going with this we're all different you know different body types different body needs anywho i ramble so for me my why i'll talk about four of them let's start with longevity i want to live long and i want to live long well you know i want to do it well i want i'm not saying i'm always going to feel like a spring chicken that's not what i'm saying i know there are times where my bones will ache <laughs> and my body will start to say no <laughs> i know that time will come i'm okay with that but I want to give myself the best start. I want to invest in my older self. I am investing in my older self. I am giving her the best, very short, I possibly can with what I know right now. And I am going to continue to learn about my body as a woman, what it needs food wise, both as fuel, pleasure, and medicine. <laughs> So yeah, longevity is important for me. I want to live well, you know, and I want my old age to be comfortable. And I love what Veronica said. I'll link her channel down below. She said that, you know, you need to see it as a bank. You're investing in your future self. You know, you may not see it now. You may not feel it now. You may think it's a, it's a whole lot of waste of time and you've got time to do this right. Well, the truth is the earlier you start, the better. 
another reason that is so important for me is this is an important way for me to cultivate and to nurture discipline now as i said <laughs> in the beginning of the video food gives me a lot of pleasure you know and i have a very strong hedonistic um spirits i believe in pleasure i believe in it all heartedly that's an entire conversation baby <laughs> so without discipline <clears throat> i will eat myself silly and i don't need to do that i don't have to do that my hedonistic nature is something i want to be a strength something i've always wanted to be a strength it, it's a, it's a part of me that allows me to learn to stay open to different ways of living of appreciating how something can make somebody else so happy yet make somebody else so sad and it's also been a fantastic way to to develop a very intense relationship with my body but when it comes to food <laughs> discipline is is so core for me because as i said i keep myself silly so developing my food story also has spilled into other parts of my life you know i am so committed to working out it even shocks me sometimes when i wake up in the morning i'm like are you serious girl are you really going to work out and i'm like yeah you know, I don't fall off the wagon. I don't really fall off the wagon, you know. I work out consistently and I couldn't even imagine myself not picking up a weight, you know. I couldn't. Have I made enough chapatis? Two, four, six, eight. Let's make one more. Let's make two more for good measure. Let's make two more. I usually make enough dough for two rounds of chapati. I'm going to end up freezing this. So that next time when I want chapati, I don't have to do step one. I just have to take the dough out of the freezer. So clever, right? And discipline is so important the older that you get. If you want to get anything done in life, whether it's on a grand scale or a small scale, discipline is a part of adulthood, whether you like it or not. You know, you just... It's, it's something you've got to nurture. It's something that you've got to put in the work. And it should touch as many facets of your life as it can possibly touch. Because the results are goddamn top tier. That's all I can say. <laughs> Reason number three is my legacy. As I've, I was not raised by women who understood how important their food stories were to them they didn't even know that was a thing which is okay but that is not something that i want for my children i want them to grow up knowing how powerful and how important their food stories are it's not just food i'm really tired of that argument it's not just food it's in fact it's very disrespectful to say something like that it's not just food it, and that disrespect comes from living the way we are. We have so much option. We go to the supermarket and we just, we can have anything we want. We go online, we can have anything we want. We pick up the phone, we can order anything we want. It, it, we start to have a lot of ingratitude towards food. And I'm, I'm not having it. It's some, my, the story I pass on to my children about food is, is, is going to be very deep. It's going to be very... It's gonna be important they're gonna get it that is one of the most important things I want to give my children is to teach them that food is a gift it is medicine it is fuel it is for pleasure my camera was heating up I had to switch it off and carry on what I was doing but I've just finished rolling up my gorgeous chapati look at all those little balls of perfection which lines up perfectly with my fourth reason for my why and that is vanity i know a lot of people feel really guilty about saying this that we are not losing weight for vanity we're saying no to society's um, beauty standards and etc etc listen <laughs> I 
wholeheartedly accept that there is a lot of vanity concerned with my food story. I like looking a certain way, I like feeling a certain way, There's, even the way I work out shapes my body in a certain way. I like it. I like it and I, I don't need to over explain myself with that. If, if you want to put vanity as your food story and you want to have your body looking a certain type of way, know that you're fully supported. <laughs> So what is Ajay going to do now? I am going to relax now. I've had a busy morning, busy afternoon. I've been here chatting with you all. My chapati will be ready in a couple of hours. Let me find out what Mr. Lyons wants to have for dinner. Yeah, I'll see you soon. of this video I did mention that one of my inspirations for doing this video was the fact that I have come to an epiphany that there's only so far I can go when it comes to eating you know <laughs> I can't just munch away just because it's healthy and I have been watching what I eat I have been a little bit mindful pulling calories here and there and not you know just stuffing myself out of pleasure but because I am talking about what may feel like restriction to other people, I thought it would be important to add a somewhat rebellious touch to this video by making a cocktail with you. Restriction in the conventional way when it comes to diet speak is not a part of my food story. For me, restriction is a matter of discipline. It's a matter of mindfulness. It's a matter of knowing, okay, you can have this, but you can't have that. You can have this much, you can't have that much. And not out of punishment, but simply knowing where to draw the line. Too much of something is bad, isn't it? So I am making one of my favorite cocktails, and that is the Negroni. It is a very simple cocktail to make. I will make sure to leave a link to it down in the description box so that you may actually make it for yourself this summer the negroni is best for those who like dry not too sweet cocktails it's also potent there is only alcohol in this co cocktail you know it doesn't play games <laughs> it comes for a big hit sip on my cocktail I would love to offer you some words of kindness and compassion because I feel like oh, how do I say this as I do food content on my channel it is important that my food story inspires it and is tied into it and I just want you to know I've not figured it all out you know as I said earlier in the video I've been figuring this out for a very long time and I probably will continue to figure it out especially now that I'm entering the middle age part of my life I still have my golden years to consider and as my body ages and changes then my food story obviously is going to change you know with that being said Compassion is such an important part of this, especially if you've had to teach yourself how to eat properly. It's not something you were raised with. And letting go of other food stories that don't serve you, that don't optimize your health, 
sometimes it can come with a little bit of anger and frustration because at the end of the day they say food is an addiction i mean here i am talking about food and pleasure letting y'all know that if i don't tell the line then baby girl becomes little miss piggy <laughs> So give yourself a lot of compassion and a lot of grace as you figure this out. Another thing I want to say is just because I'm here seated on this platform making this video that is very cinematic and very pretty and someone watching it can sit there and think all oh my days she has bloody figured it out. She has like really figured it out, you know, how am I going to do that? If you need help, find it. And I know sometimes help can also mean money and that is a thing of privilege. Nutritionists and dietitians and personal trainers, I would even put life coaches in this category, they cost money. If you have it, spend it. You're an investment. Bank your coins for your eight-year-old self, okay? It's okay to ask for help. It really is okay to ask for help it really really is okay to ask for help find help figure it out it is not easy I understand the struggle I truly do I used to be a heavier girl I was raised by heavy women I see the struggle you know I, I get it even when I hear them talk I can hear the confusion in their voice of why am I not just eating lettuce and becoming skinny it is far deeper than that and if you need help figuring out your food story please find it you know please find it if you can don't forget the compassion bit you gotta give yourself grace you gotta give yourself space you have done what you've done with the tools that were in your toolbox but you have the power to change that toolbox you really do so I'm going to go and enjoy this cocktail now and I will see you back for dinner Enough with the serious talk. It's time to cook dinner I am going to be cooking dinner from one of my favorite cookbooks. I absolutely Love this book. The recipes in this are so easy if you like spicy food if you love food inspired by Sri Lanka and India like ugh, this is such a well-written book I will do some research and see if I can put it in the description box this I use this quite a bit in fact some of the recipes I've already memorized so today we are going to make this gorgeous carrot salad that I absolutely love it's called a carrot sambal it is so simple so tasty it is absolutely ridiculous it is a kind of salad that is so fresh so sweet so simple it could work for so many situations i absolutely love having it when i have a curry with me and some chapati it's just, oh, so so good as you can see the recipe is incredibly easy it just has carrot salt black pepper lemon juice desiccated coconut and coriander to garnish i also think it's a kind of recipe that would be fantastic if you made ahead of time and popped it in the fridge so that all the flavors can come together i, I think it's also a salad that needs to be super duper cold so you can really enjoy that crunchy sweet carrots and the meld with the lemon juice Ugh, it works it just really really works love that salad and to go with that salad and my chapati i am going to do this recipe of black eyed beans black eyed beans are one of my favorite to eat i love their firm texture and i also love how simple this recipe is it when i made it for the first time it blew my mind let's make it
So I am going to cover this about three minutes and let those spices really cook up. These beans are parboiled and they've just come from the freezer because I like to batch cook my beans like that. I will boil a big batch and section them off and pop them in the freezer. So I'm going to really reduce this fire to low. I'm going to add my salt. And I'm going to just let this simmer as I cook my chapatis. are looking good um, I might add a splash of water yeah just another five minutes and they'll be done I'm also going to add some coriander to this but I'll get there soon after I get to a certain point with my chapatis maybe when I've got like two or three left to cook I always like to taste a chapati as I'm cooking them let's just have half because we're behaving ourselves <laughs> a few months ago I would have gobbled two by now ah! a little bit dry not my favorite flour combination but as I said I'm always willing to play in my kitchen and try different combinations play with recipes this is not bad maybe six out of ten I think it's the chickpea flour that's making it a little bit dry hmm. still really tasty my darlings and to leave you so as I serve my food I just want to encourage you to find your food story it is an act a very radical act of self-love um, self-awareness it could potentially be a part of your healing journey as well and remember you can ask for help if this is a part of your life that you are struggling with don't punish yourself please apply a lot of compassion look for help if you can and if you can't 
challenge yourself to find that help yourself challenge yourself to find an interest in investing in your food story and learning about food doesn't the food look absolutely glorious oh i'm so excited to eat this this is something I have cooked before, so I know I'm just about to have a very delicious meal. And with that, my darlings, I want to thank you so much for spending the day with me. I hope you found some value in this video. As I edit this video, I will see what I need to put in the description box. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Ijoma, and I'll see you soon.